Welcome to our last chapter talking about acids and bases. Now you've probably seen these before probably in the context of the Arrhenius acid base theory but now we're introducing a new one called the Bronsted Lowry theory which works a little better it's a little bit more complex and the first thing that it does is it kind of changes our definition of what is an acid what is a base. An acid or identifying acids and bases is something that is best not done from a snapshot of a chemical. So if we point out something like HSO3 and say, is this an acid? The answer is maybe, tell me who it's reacting with. In some cases, this may act as an acid by giving away hydrogen. In other cases, it may not. So the best way to determine whether something's an acid or a base in Bronsted-Lowry is to see what did it look like at the beginning of the reaction and what does it look like afterwards. An acid is a substance that gives away hydrogen, in other words gives away protons, and you can see that happen when you have a chemical species and then you see it later and it's down one hydrogen. And because we're giving away hydrogen ions, which have a positive charge, giving up one of these means you lose an H out of your formula and your charge actually goes down by one because you've given away a positive charge also. So here we see HSO3 and here its H has disappeared and its charge has gone from minus one to minus two. So on that basis it is safe to say that hydrogen sulfite is an acid and on the other side if you're a base, you're something that picks up hydrogen. You acquire more, and that means your formula should end up with an additional H in it, and your charge should go up by one. So water here goes from H2O to H3O. It gained another hydrogen, and its charge increased. So we can say that water is a base. So far, so good. Okay, now because these things end up in equilibrium, you can have a forward reaction and a reverse reaction happening at the same time, and so we have to consider these also and whether they could be acids or bases. If this reaction were going from right to left, we'd see H3O, if we consider this a starting point, turning into H2O, meaning it lost a hydrogen and lost a piece of charge. That means H3O acted like an acid there. H3O is an acid because it could give away a hydrogen and turn back into this. The sulfite ion, if we consider the reaction to start here and go towards the left, this SO3 acquires a hydrogen and its charge goes up from minus 2 to minus 1, so sulfite ion apparently can behave like a base or is a potential base. Now, you see how these are paired up here. We have HSO3 before and after. It has one form that's an acid and the other that's base. And the same thing happened with water and hydronium ion. There's an acid and a base as the before and after versions of that. These are called conjugate pairs conjugate pairs. Uh, a con conjugates are things that are not the same, but they go together. And in this case, HSO3 and SO3 are conjugates of each other. We say that this, you could say that this is an acid and that SO3 is its conjugate base. Or going the other way, you could say this is a base and this is its conjugate acid. Water is a base and hydronium is its conjugate acid. Or going the other way, you could say if this is an acid, then water is its conjugate base. So we're going to be identifying those pairs a lot. Let's see if we can do a few more of these a little faster. I think we've covered all the groundwork now, so let's put it to work. NH3 is the before situation. What does it look like afterwards? Uh, apparently it's gained a hydrogen, so it was a base over here because bases receive or take or steal hydrogen and then ammonium ion is its conjugate acid. The other thing that happens here is we have water 
Now water can be an acid or a base. Which one is it in this case? Well, what did it do? Apparently it gave away a hydrogen. It was H2O and now it's just HO. So it lost one hydrogen. This apparently was its acid form. And OH is its conjugate base. Fair enough. Always you should be able to, after you've written one of these, you should be able to turn around and read it from right to left, and that should make sense also. This says that NH4 is an acid, which can turn into a conjugate base here. That looks okay. It gave away a hydrogen. And OH can be a base. Well, it's one, it's the very best base. And it can turn into a conjugate acid. It's a little weird to talk about water as an acid, but compared to OH, it is. It is the conjugate acid of hydroxide. Okay, HF uh, turns into F minus. What did it do to get there? It gave away a hydrogen. Therefore, HF is an acid. The fluoride ion is its conjugate base. HSO3, this could be an acid or a base. Which one is it now? Well, what did it do? It gained a hydrogen. That means it was a base over here. It acquired one more hydrogen and turned into HSO3, which we would call its conjugate acid. Notice every one of these reactions has an acid and a base on one side, acid and a base on the other. If you ever get acid, acid, or base, base, that's bad news. Shouldn't happen. There has to be somebody giving away the hydrogen and somebody else receiving the hydrogen. It's just like redox, where we had one thing giving away electrons and another thing receiving those electrons. Same, same deal with hydrogen. You have to have a give and a take for there to be a realistic reaction. Uh, H2SO3, I don't think this could gain any more hydrogen. I've never heard of H3SO3. So this is probably an acid. Yeah, it is. It gave away a single hydrogen and one unit of charge to become HSO3. So this is the acid form. This is the conjugate base. And the other one, HS minus, is a base and it acquires a hydrogen and turns into its conjugate acid. Uh, HNO2, apparently it gave away a hydrogen. So this is the acid form that is looking to give away a hydrogen. This is the base form that's thinking, uh, maybe I'll get that hydrogen back now. Uh, chloride could be considered a base. Why? Because it could receive a hydrogen from somebody else and turn into HCl, which would be its conjugate acid. And finally, H2H3O2. Okay, so C2H3O2 is the same piece we have over here. The difference is there was one hydrogen attached to this originally, and afterwards that hydrogen is gone. If it gave away a hydrogen, then this has got to be an acid, and this is its conjugate base. And by elimination, that would mean HS is a base. And hopefully it receives a hydrogen over here. Yep. So HS is a base. And H2S is its conjugate acid.